Have you ever imagined how those beautiful sculptures are carved into those hardwoods? Doesn't that seem amazing? What a creative way to turn a piece of wood into something crazy or useful, right? But to do such challenging work, you must have the right and the best equipment, so why wait? Let's dive into the list of incredible woodworking equipment currently in demand. 1. The Moisture Meter A quality wood moisture meter is essential to the long-term triumph of any woodworking assignment you put together. Timber mills endeavor to try their sets of lumber according to the deliberate end product destination. If the wood is reaped in the wet northeast but dispatched to the parched southwest, it will be parched more than wood held in the northeast for use by woodworkers. The sensation of your woodworking task, from wood flooring to kitchen armoire to pleasing furniture, depends on the correct moisture range levels of the woods you utilize for your area of the country. Some moisture meters have rivets that skewer the texture of the wood. This can leave small holes that tarnish the surface and require filling. Others are pinless. They have sensing plates that skim the wood beneath. Yet not all pinless moisture meters are the exact look for one that uses technology that is not impacted by the surface moisture in the wood. 2. The sliding bevel. If you're measuring various angles, a sliding bevel or T-bevel will be a handy tool. This is modifiable and you can seal it at the slant you want to mark, making it much more time savvy to mark numerous angles. 3. The hand plane. A hand plane is a key to ingenuity in your woodwork. You can flatten a fragment of wood, count a curve to it, or square your job. Sharp or chamfer your wares using a block plane. Once you have a portion dovetailed, you can gloss the joint with your hand plane instead than spending infinite time smoothing. Your plane can ease a piece's edges, taking its sharpness out. It is most important to ensure the hand plane's blade is sharp. Use a little oil on the sharpening stone and hold the bevel flat against the stone. Raise the heel a little and hone it. It will form a burr, but that's okay. Just turn the blade over and rub it on the stone on the flat side. It will terminate the burr. A cap tack bears the blade, where you alter the plane depth you want to cut. If you're serving fine work, measure the blade at about 1 64th inch. For more all-around work, you can go with as much as 1 16th. Roll the coercion from the back of the plane to the front as you satisfy the cut so that you don't end up arching. If you're going to plane end grain, plane both ends toward the middle to keep from ripping up the outside edge. 4. The Jig You don't have to measure every cut and joint if you have jigs. Most woodworkers make their own jigs. You usually employ a jig with a powerful instrument to steer the piece through the saw. You can make a jig that you can use to cut a perfect circle. You may need to make furniture with taper legs. A jig will accomplish this without remarking the slants on each leg. A dovetail jig does just that. It guides your wood as you create dovetail joints. 5. The Feather Board No, you're not looking for buried treasure with your metal detector. You're looking for something that could ruin your treasures, your woodworking tools. Keeping metal out of your cutting surfaces is vital, or you'll ruin blades, bits, and knives on your tools. A brief scan with a metal detector will let you comprehend if a piece of screw or nail is still nestled in your stock. You'll find out anyway. It's pleasant to find out before you ruin your instruments. 6. The Rip Fence Your table saw should have a rip fence. You'll want a fine-tuning adjustment that operates parallel to the blade. Some rip fences have a modification knob on each end, others on just one end. The main thing to peek for is torque. When you drive the fence, do both ends move evenly or does the far end hang up? This can be a real problem and you'll save yourself a lot of frustration in stock lumber if you have a rip fence that stays parallel to the cutting blade. 7. The Surface Planer The surface planer is a high-tech solution for loyal woodworkers through the ages who have patiently and expertly prepared their stock by hand to get at the right viscosity. The time-saving surface planer completes your world much simpler. The planer has a plane onto which you feed your stock. This table is between 10 and 14 inches, so that's the utmost width of stock you can send across. A set of cutter rotates, cutting the wood as it is fed. You modify the deepness of the cut with a crank, normally on one end of the planer. It looks like the wheel on a sewing machine. Most planners will arrange your stock down 6 inches, but you must do this in small increments. You gain a slick, evenly planed surface. The intake rollers inside the planer will drag the wares in and feed it under the blades, while outtake rollers rack it out the other side. The stock will move gradually and steadily under the blades, rotating at a remarkably high RPM. This produces a slick finish to your stock. 
There should be ratches within the planer so that if the rollers forfeit their hold on the stock, it won't boot back out of the machine. You should also scan to see if the surface planer you're regarding has a dust vacuum because the quantity of sawdust sired by these machines is epic. You should always use hearing safety when you're using a surface planer. These will be the most vociferous tools in your workshop and can cause impairment. Safety glasses are also advised for all power equipment. Which one is the next cool piece of equipment you will need? Comment if we missed any cool gadgets you have in your workshops. Until then, adios!